Hello, welcome to the Church Weekend at Home. This is the Weekend at Home for September 2021, and we're glad that you're joining us. This is our first session, the Friday night session, although if you're watching this at some other time, please know that you're absolutely welcome to do that. My hope is that as we reflect on these things that I'm about to share is that God would use this time together. I wanted to start by saying that time is quite a weird thing. We're all gifted with time, and yet we can't get more of, uh, more of it. Even if we wanted to, if we wanted to go and pay for, to get more time, if we were a billionaire, there's, there's no way of securing more of it. And because time is this somewhat strange thing, we seem to have this fascination with it. We can't travel back and forth in time, and yet many a movie has been made imagining what it would be like if we could do that. I mean, just think for a moment, maybe if you're watching this with somebody else, you could turn to them and, and discuss what movies do you know that deal with time and time travel? Maybe you can come up with one or two. Maybe you just pause this and talk about that for a moment. But, but the truth is, we can think about all these movies, all these stories. As far as I'm aware, we can't physically move through time. We can use, though, our minds to travel through time. We can travel backwards in time. And, and there's a word that we use to describe that in the English language, and we call that reflecting. Sometimes a name or, or a picture or a smell even can, can transport our minds back through memories, back through time to bring us to a particular place. We can also think forwards. We can dream about the future and, and what it may hold. We have, a, again, a word that encapsulates this, and that is to imagine. We have all been gifted with the ability, no matter how old we are, to use our imagination. Our imagination can enable us to transport through our thoughts into the future. And so tonight, I want to invite you, and again, I realize some of you may not be watching this in the evening time, but I want to invite you, wherever you are, to travel through time with me using both reflection and imagination. I want to start by going backwards first. And to do that, I want to ta ask you, and this may sound a little strange, but I want to ask you to take a breath and to close your eyes. Now, none of you are, are, are too cool to do this. So all of you, if you're able, just take a breath and close your eyes. And I want you to think back to where you were and what life was like three years ago. As you're thinking, it may be helpful to know that's 2018. Maybe you can think about, if you're younger, the year that you were in school or where you were at in uni. Maybe for others of us, we can think about a major life event or a, or a big birthday that happened. Where were you? What was going on in 2018? More specifically, I invite you to hone in on exactly three years ago to September, late September of 2018. As you picture that, as you try to remember, maybe you're having some difficulty. And so I invite you to open your eyes and to reflect on something with me. I'd like to share what I can remember from three years ago. Three years ago, I was on my way here to Scotland from Texas with Liz, my wife. And it was my second time to Scotland. As we arrived, we were taken by some of you up to a camp up in Nethy Bridge. And we had this weekend away with you. And this weekend away in Nethy Bridge over the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday uh, was this wonderful time. It was a little bit of a strange time. Uh, it was strange because Martin never showed up to it. And, and it was kind of strange that he didn't show up, but he didn't show up because he was actually really quite ill. Secondly, it was, it was a sad moment for the church. Uh, not too long prior to the weekend away, Chris Milne had suddenly passed away. It was also a beautiful moment. It was a moment where we had wonderful times together over those three days of worship, of prayer, of, of friendship and connecting with one another. Over that weekend, I met some incredible people, a couple that stand out, Caroline Goodfellow, just a beautiful, wonderful lady. Another person that I met over that weekend was Dominic Smart. 
In particular, I remember one, this very sweet memory to me. I remember over that weekend on the Saturday walking with a large group and it ended up that Dominic and I ended up walking next to each other and chatting for quite some time. And I'll never forget that moment. It's very precious. That was three years ago. Now, I'm going to invite you to close your eyes again. And again, this is just to help us to think. And I want you to think about what has happened since three years ago, September 2018, up to now, this moment, September 21. Take a few moments to work mentally through. Make your way forward in time. Maybe start by thinking about the end of the year in 2018 and Christmas. And then on into 2019. What was 2019 like? Then think about 2020. And finally, bring yourself up to 2021 and all that's happened in this year to this moment. I imagine that for most of us, a lot has happened in that three year span of time. Perhaps like me, you've got a little more gray hair on the sides of your head, or or maybe even some more wrinkles. Or maybe if you're a student, you're actually taller. One thing that's changed is you're physically taller and bigger than you were three years ago. Maybe you live somewhere new. Maybe you work somewhere new. I know one thing's for certain. All of us could say something about this horrible thing that starts with C and rhymes with the word COVID. The fact is we're all here, September 2021, three years further down the trail of life. And perhaps as we find ourselves here, we're a little wiser. Perhaps we're a little more jaded. Perhaps we're a little more optimistic or perhaps we're a little more uncertain. Whatever place you're in, we're all coming to this moment from different places and postures with different experiences over the last, not just days and weeks, but years. I want to invite you to know two very important things before we go any further. The first is, you are welcome here. You're welcome to this moment. It's okay to arrive at this moment and not feel like everything's together, to actually be struggling. It's okay, as we've reflected on the last three years, to realize that maybe your passion level for God or your passion level for the church community has has dropped off a little. My prayer is that God would use this time and this weekend for all of us, that he would speak through our time together. And we need to start by knowing that it's good for us to be here, to be with God and to be with each other. The second thing that I think is really important for you to know is that God has and God will hold you perfectly in his hand. As we've talked about moving through time, we need to know that God is with us. As you've reflected on both the past and the present, it's really important for us to know that reality. And it may sound pretty for me to say, well, God has perfectly held us in in his hand. That sounds nice. It rolls off the tongue well. But this isn't some nice notion that I've just come up by myself to encourage you with. No, this is truth from God's word. In fact, if we turn to Psalm 139, which I'm about to read to you, what you'll find in verse 15 and 16 is this beautiful thought. It says this, you, speaking of God, watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. That is truth. God has seen our lives. He even knows the future. God intimately knows our past, our present, and our future. In fact, we see this same thought coming out earlier on in the same psalm. If you were to jump back 10 verses to uh, verse 5 and 6, it says this, You, again, speaking to God, you, God, go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. Now, just think for a moment about that first sentence. It says, you go before me and follow me. 
what that's, I, I love the image that that gives to us. Because what it's saying is that as, as we travel through time, God is, yes, both in front of us. He goes before us and he's behind us, folding all of the difficulties, all of the challenges into his perfect and good will. As we move through time, which feels very uncertain to us, as, as we travel from the past to the present and on into the future, God is there in the future, before us, and also following us. What a, what a precious thing for us to know. Now, as we speak about the future and moving forward, I'd like to ask you a question, and that is, what is the future? What is in front of us? What lies ahead of us, not just as individuals, but also as church families? This is where I'd like to ask you to change modes of sort, from reflection and thinking backwards to imagination and dreaming forward. Let us spend some time in these next few moments dreaming about the future. It's good for us to use our imaginations. Now, speaking of using our imaginations, the best people that I know are using their imaginations right now are my twin girls. Sometimes they can play for hours using their imagination, and I love to hear it happening. Typically, it involves these two little guys at the moment. We've got Yako and Sergi that they love to play with. These are their two favorite things. And for hours and hours, they can imagine and they can play. And as I think about the fact that my girls are so good at doing this, there's part of me that says, okay, well, what changes in us that we imagine less as we grow older and move forward in life? I think we begin to believe that using our imaginations is silly. And I want to ask you to put that notion that using your imagination is silly to the side and ask you to use your imagination to allow us to dream together specifically about these church families of Hillview and Contour Community Church. So to do that, what I'd like to do is to call in to assist us our five church values. If you go to the church website and you click up on the top, there's a little icon up the top that says about us. And if you click on that, it'll go to a page with several options. And one of those options says values. And it has a subheading that says, who do we want to be? And what this is speaking about is speaking about the future. Who do we want to be? Who do we hope to be? Who do we dream to be? And so I'm going to use these values to help us to imagine, to project out what the future could hold as God brings his hand of leading and guiding and blessing on us as church families. The first value that you'll find if you click on that that, that icon on the website is that we would be a family, a, a church family that is grace centered. We desire and, and dream to be a church full of people who love and know the grace of God. But we don't just know it for ourselves, we also share it with others and with the world around us. Maybe to picture this, it would be helpful for you to think of a time when you've watched a movie that you've really loved. Typically, what happens when you find a movie that you really like, two things happen. One is you start to dwell on it. You think about it a lot. You're like, wow, remember when that thing happened in the storyline? Like we start to dwell on it and think on it. Secondly, the other thing that you'll typically do is you'll start to share with others about this movie. You're like, ah, oh, this movie was awesome. This was so good. You need to go check it out. And in the same way, this is how we should be with God's grace. We should be dwelling on it and we should be sharing it around us. 1 John 4 talks about this in verse 10 and 11. It says, this is real love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us. And he sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Hopefully as I read that, you say a strong amen. It goes on and says, dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. We are to be a community that relishes the grace of God and shares it freely amongst us. Martin's going to talk more about this in our second session of The Weekend Away. But I just want to invite you to imagine what these churches would look like, what they would feel like if there were places that were continually overflowing with the love and grace of God. A second value that you'll find if you dig into the church values is that we value, or we want to be a church made up of worshipers. Worshipers 
are people who love God more than anything. They worship him. People who lift him up in all that they say, in all that they do. People who are thinking about God and thinking and living for him 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And this is what we were made for. We were made, designed by God to be worshipers. How this sin has come in and distorted our worship. And what this means is that often we can say that we love God, but in reality, our hearts will love other things more than him. Anything that takes God's place in our hearts and is the thing that we look to to give us satisfaction or security or meaning has a name and a name that we don't like to use, but it's called an idol. John Calvin is a man famous for his work in helping the church go through a really big change 500 years ago, said this, Man's nature, so to speak, is a perpetual factory of idols. What he's saying is that we're all constantly looking to other things to satisfy and fulfill us. And this is not how it should be. And so I simply ask you, imagine what this church, what this church family would look like if we were to grow as worshippers of our great God. Another church value is disciples. We want to be a group of disciples, a group of Jesus followers. That's what a disciple is, a a follower, a learner, a student, someone who is committed to growth. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 18 says, Grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's good for us to learn. It's good for us to grow. And so my hope is that we would be a church full of people committed to following Jesus and seeking to grow in him. Imagine with me what would happen if, like those first disciples in the early church, we too were sold out for Jesus. We were all in, no matter what the cost was. What would God do amongst us if we too had that posture to be followers of Jesus? The next value that we find deals with looking beyond ourselves. We want, by God's grace, to be missionaries. Unfortunately, that word has some negative connotations. We think when we say that word missionary, often of it means that we must uproot our lives physically and, and travel to some far off jungle and tell people, pagan people there, about God. And that's somewhat extreme language that I use there, but I hope you get the point that that's not reality. Every Christian is called to share of the love that they themselves have received. You and I cannot escape from that truth. Even if it makes us feel uncomfortable, God has called us. Matthew 28, the great commission, go into the world. Acts 1.8 says you will receive power and you will be my witnesses And it lists out all these places and it says to the ends of the earth. That's for all of us. And so as we think about this, should we love God? Yes. Should we also love one another as a church family and really seek to care and and nurture one another? Absolutely. But should we also love and reach out to the world that is broken and in desperate need around us? Definitely. Tim Keller says all of this so succinctly and beautifully. I want to read a paragraph from him. He's a pastor and he says this. So while we are not all called to be preachers or prophets or missionaries, every believer is called to go. It means to be willing to leave safety and security in order to share the good news of Jesus with others. This may or may not entail leaving physical and social locations, but it always means risk and vulnerability. He goes on and says this, Mission is not only for a spiritual elite or for the well-rested or for people with the gift of the gab or for outgoing personalities or for those with theological training. It is for every person who belongs to him. It is because God is by nature ascending God. He never calls us in to bless us without also sending us out to be a blessing to others. To all that he has just said there, I say a big amen. We are all as Christians missionaries. 
We are ambassadors representing Jesus, our Savior. Eric Little, the man made famous by the chariot of fi- Chariots of Fire story, the runner from the 1900s who also was a missionary in China, said this, We are all missionaries. Wherever we go, we either bring people nearer to Christ or repel them from Christ. So on Sunday, this Sunday, on the weekend away, we'll have a chance to dip our toes into the water of doing some missions by going to consider our local context and to pray and to invite. And so our hope as we dream about the future is that we would grow in this, that we grow as missionaries. Imagine what the church would look like if we were all convinced that the good news was so good that we couldn't keep it to ourselves. The final value that we have to share is, and it's certainly not the least, is family. I've intentionally actually saved this one to the last because so much of what we can grow in over this weekend away is, yes, centered about being worshipers or disciples, being missionaries and being centered on the grace of God. But this weekend in particular feels like a moment for us to be together as a church family. A Christian, by definition, is a family member. They are a child of God, adopted and permanently secured into God's family. 1 John is this beautiful passage in in chapter 3 that says this, See how very much our Father, God, loves us. He calls us His children. And that is what we are. A Christian is not meant to walk the Christian life alone. We need each other. We need community. And that's why this time where we're coming out of COVID has been such a challenging time. That's why even this weekend is so important. The last months and and year or two in particular have seemed to pull and fragment apart. And so we're hopeful that this time will be a time for us to be together, to, to know each other and to be in relationship with one another. And so I want to encourage you, even if, yes, you're watching this digitally, maybe you'll come along over the the coming days of the weekend on the Saturday and the Sunday. And even if you're not, I want to encourage you to lean into community. As you get the opportunity, engage with someone, strike up a conversation, listen well. Ask caring questions. If, if you're interacting with somebody else from the church family, even maybe sending a message on WhatsApp, and then if they bring up something that's important, pray for them. Even in the moment, offer up a prayer. Let's be the family, the church family that God has called us to be. Imagine a church family where you are known, where you are loved And you are an active participant in not just receiving care and love, but you are actually an active participant in giving of that care and love as well. If I could pull all of these five values, these five strings together in a question, by asking a question, I would do that by asking this question. Who do Hillview and Contour Community Churches hope to be? And to answer that in a sentence, I would say this. We hope to be a grace-centered family of worshipers, growing as disciples, embracing God's mission. Let me give you that one more time. We hope to be a grace-centered family of worshipers, growing as disciples and embracing God's mission. And so my hope is, our prayer is, that this weekend would be a step in the journey of of that happening, of that becoming a reality. And for that to happen, we need God's help. And we also need each of us to take some personal responsibility. And so the question that you're left with is, are you willing and are you wanting to grow in these five things that we've talked about, to grow in God's grace, to grow as a disciple, to grow as a worshiper, to grow as somebody living on mission, to grow as a family member? And as I list out all those things, it may sound like a lot, and that's because it is. But this has to start with quite a simple posture, really. That posture is having a heart that is wholly or completely 
for God and having a willing mind, just a surrendered posture to God. Just this week, I was, as I was in the Bible, I, I found this passage in my reading. It was in 1 Chronicles chapter 28. And in this passage, David, the king, has a prayer and an encouragement for his son, Solomon. And I want to transpose this over as a prayer and an encouragement for you. And so 1 Chronicles 28 verse 9 says this, Worship and serve God with your whole heart and a willing mind. I want that to be what I I leave you with. Yes, we want to grow in these five values. Yes, the future is not particularly certain. But what we need to worry about, what we need to, well, not worry, what we need to focus in is worshiping and serving God with our whole heart and with a willing mind. Is that your posture? Is that my posture? I want to encourage it to be. Let's evaluate. Even in these next few moments, take a few moments to evaluate. And say, do I have an open heart to God? Do I have a willing mind? May God speak to you as you ask that question. May His Spirit bring leading and conviction. And may in these next moments, and not just the next moments, the next days and months and weeks and years, God lead us into the future. He is a good God. He has been with us in the past. He is with us right now. And I am sure... I really am sure that he will lead us into the future.